Namaskar, Banakam, Sashrikal, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan Family. I'm Anjali, and today we're going to be reacting to Abrogation of Article 370 is a restoration of human rights, says the noted communist Sananda Vishit. Yes. So, if you guys haven't seen on our homepage, we also did the congressional hearing, the first one, um, and Artit Singh... Uh, had tried her best to defend India and um, kind of, you know, outnumbered and got shot down pretty quickly. And they didn't really give her a lot of time to speak. And so uh, this is a, another s congressional hearing that just came out. And this is actually just a piece of it. So we're not doing the whole thing. That would be way too long. And um, so it's just mostly Sunanda Vashit's Vash um her her speech most of her speech and you know and i saw this other um economic times put this out about her speech her personal story as a kashmiri pundit hindu made a powerful impact on the hearing she also ensured that discussions retained a focus on the issue of cross-border radical islamic terrorism which affects Jammu and Kashmir. She also made her voice heard in the proceedings and intervened every time a false fax was propagated by other witnesses. So I just wanted to read that because I thought that was an awesome way to put her, her speech. So we're going to start this up. Ready, Angie? Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission for inviting me to testify here as a witness today. It's worth remembering that this commission is named after the late Congressman Tom Lantos, a Hungarian-born Holocaust survivor. In July 2003, he said, Indians and Jews share a passionate commitment to respect for others, for the rule of law, and for the mindless, vicious, fanatic Islamic terrorism. I'm also reminded today of American journalist Daniel Pearl, who was kidnapped and beheaded by Pakistani terrorists. His last words, mm. my father is a Jewish, my mother is a Jewish, I am a Jewish. Honorable members of the Tom Lantos Commission, I speak before you the last words of Daniel Pearl in my own words. My father is a Kashmiri Hindu, my mother is a Kashmiri Hindu, I am a Kashmiri Hindu, and our home and lives in Kashmir were destroyed by radical Islamic terrorism. As I begin to speak, I am choked. As I begin to speak, I'm choked by the thoughts of those voices I represent here because their voices were extinguished in the most brutal fashion. I am a member of the minority Hindu community from Kashmir, victim of the worst ethnic cleansing witnessed in independent India. I speak here today because I am a survivor. An innocent young woman, a lab assistant in a school, wasn't as lucky as I was. She was abducted, blindfolded, gang raped and cut into two halves on a mechanical saw while still alive. Her name was Girija Tikku. Her only crime, her faith. I am her voice today. I am also the voice of young Kashmiri Hindu engineer who was hunted by terrorists, again for his faith. When terrorists came to kill him, he hid inside a rice container in his attic and he would have been alive today had his location not been disclosed to the terrorists by his own neighbors. His neighbors he trusted, neighbors that we trusted. Mm. The terrorists shot That's him so through the container so and forced his wife to eat the blood-soaked rice. His name was oh B.K. Ganju. His crime, his faith. I speak for him today. I could go on and on. We have seen ISIS level of horror and brutality in Kashmir 30 years before the West was even introduced to the brutalities of radical Islamic terror. I'm glad these hearings are happening today because when my family and I lost our homes, our livelihood, and our way of life, the world remained silent. Where were the advocates of human rights when my rights were taken away? Where were they on the ninth night of 19th January 1990? when there were voices blaring from all mosques in Kashmir that they wanted Kashmir with Hindu women but without Hindu men? Where were the saviors of humanity when my feeble old grandfather stood with two kitchen knives and an old rusted axe 
ready to kill my mother and I in order to save us from the much worse fate that awaited us if we landed in the hands of terrorists on the same fateful night. My people were given three choices, flee, convert, or die. Around 400,000 Kashmiri Hindus fled right after that night of horror. They survived. Those who didn't were killed. Today, 30 years later, I'm still not welcome in my home in Kashmir. I am not allowed to follow my faith without fear. My house in Kashmir is illegally occupied as those are cow of other countless others in my community. Those that are not occupied have mostly been burned down or are ransacked. Thousands of our temples have been vandalized, desecrated, and lay in ruins. Every effort has been made to eradicate Hinduism from Kashmir. Today, Kashmir is home to only one religion. This is by design and is the ultimate violation of human rights. Diversity and acceptance of different views are not the norm in today's Kashmir. It's not just Hindus that have been ethnically cleansed. cleansed. Six have been massacred. A fatwa was announced against Christian schools in Kashmir, accusing them of luring Muslims to Christianity. What human rights are we talking about when all minorities have either been driven out or silenced? An Islamist state of Kashmir where other religions are not welcome and tolerance of any other viewpoint is absent is no citadel of human rights. This is the society that is being created by Kashmir by those who are talking about human rights. Terrorism, ladies and gentlemen, is the ultimate opponent of human rights. Human rights cannot and should not take precedence over human life. Everyone who stands for freedom, liberty, and right to life should worry about radicalization that fuels terror. A 65-year-old shopkeeper, Ghulam Muhammad Mir, gets killed by the terrorists because he opened his shop to earn his livelihood. Truck drivers and apple traders are shot dead by terrorists for simply wanting to earn their livelihood. The simple act of earning livelihood in Kashmir today is prohibited so by terrorists sad. because earning a livelihood would show that Kashmir is moving towards normalcy. I ask you, who are these people who fear normalcy in Kashmir? Who are these people who talk about human rights but fear free movement, free thought, and right to earn livelihood? Abrogation of Article 370 that has raised so much concern around the world is in fact a restoration of human rights. Indian Constitution, which is modeled on the U.S. Constitution, Indian Constitution, excuse me, everybody. Indian Constitution, which is modeled on the. I want to say, just, I mean, we want to, we want to give everybody the respect of listening to them. So I would urge that nobody interrupt. Thank you so Thank much, you. All right. Chairman. I was saying that Indian Constitution, which is modeled on the U.S. Constitution, is the most liberal document in the world. The Constitution was not it's applicable to JNK in totality as long as Article 370 was in force. After abrogation of Article 370, people of Jammu and Ladakh have been liberated from the tyranny of being half citizens in their own country. Child marriage, which was responsible for child trafficking and sex trafficking, has been made illegal in Kashmir. Kashmiri women and LGBTQ community in Kashmir has been given the same rights as other Indian citizens. As a mother, it's very important to me now yeah. that child marriage has been outlawed in Kashmir. Today, I'm delighted that Kashmiris have the same rights as Indian citizens. If something as serious as women's right to own property and granting of LGBTQ rights to choose, amongst many others, has been accomplished through abrogation of Article 370, then it's safe to assume that restoration of internet in few remaining districts of Kashmir is not too far away. I am a proud daughter of Kashmir. I am a proud legatee of India's composite civilization. Terrorism has uprooted me and snatched my home from me. I hope my human rights are restored to someday and the human rights of my community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wow. I mean, her story is really heart touching yeah. and heartfelt. You know, my husband has always talked about the Kamishmiri pundits in India and how they were taken from their home. But to hear her story and her examples and, um, you know, really is horrifying to hear that like just because of their faith they were basically ran out of their country or you know or lived a horrible life you choose you know you either go 
find a new home, leave your home, leave all your stuff and run away and not really have a home or a place anymore or stay and, you know, and live a horrible life or be killed. You know, there wasn't really a lot of choice in that matter at all. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, there was a lot of things bad that had come after that. And now because the article is being taken away, people are getting their rights back. You know, a lot of the stuff that, that was legal that shouldn't have been legal now is illegal. And, you know, so like she said, human rights violation, where were these people yelling about human rights violation and genocide when her family was being run out of her home and many others thousands and thousands of other people that had to run away or be killed or or converted or or turn some horrible life there was no choice in the matter you know and like she said her grandfather was holding the knife like you know your life might be better if you died you know if running away wasn't a choice he didn't want them to live a horrible life you know just so sad to hear those things yeah and um you know hopefully like she said in the end hopefully this is a step in the right direction a step forward and giving everybody more equal rights and and making sure that terror is not happening you know yelling about the curfew and some people don't have internet if you lift it it's gonna start a blood bloodbath bath. quoting quoting somebody um yeah like if you lift it and there's gonna be a bloodbath so to keep civilians safe you're keeping a curfew they don't have as much internet connection you know but if you're in your home you have food and water and you're alive that should be a good thing and hopefully it's only temporary you know they're not yeah. saying it's forever she's saying you know that even there's a few areas that still have the curfew and hopefully you know things will get lifted but this area is right on the border this is where all the conflicts started you know so there's a reason there's some extra military force there yeah and you know they want to keep the civilians safe. It's not about, you know, hurting. They're not trying to hurt them. They're trying to keep them safe until things settle down and they can make it a beautiful place where the economy can grow and people can have jobs and open shops and hopefully not get shot, like she said. You yeah, know? that was terrible. Yeah, like just, you know people driving trucks that were getting pulled over and killed because they wanted to make their living and somebody didn't agree with them or being cut in half because your faith isn't what somebody else wants you to be and you know that's not how life should be that no. yeah where were people yelling and screaming you know when she was ripped from her home um you know her it just unbelievable and and we know part of that panel so there was supposed to be 84 members but only four showed up so yeah that's terrible and they yeah. need more people on that panel and they need more people supporting and defending india yeah yeah like rt rt tiko singh she tried her best um but we need strong voices uh Sundana, she more people like her. Yeah, more she, people that will state the facts. She stated the facts. She told her personal story. She knows the stuff. You know, Christine Fair is another good one. Yeah, knows the facts about why the article was put there, why it's taken away. You know, like she said before, they didn't have rights because of that article. Now with the article removed, they have rights. She could buy mm -hmm. land there. You know, women didn't have rights. You know, there was a lot of uh, underage you know child marriages that were happening that's now illegal those are the things this is this is trying to make it an integral part of india and everybody's trying to get in on it and p give their opinion you know yeah. last panel they talked about genocide like are you kidding me 
India hasn't even started a war. Why would they even start genocide? They've only defended their country. Only defended. And the only people that have gotten injured since they lifted the curfew were not, were from terrorists. They weren't soldiers soldiers killing just random people people they weren't like india starting a war no when they started to lift the curfew a little bit then terrorists started you know killing innocent people again yeah so things you know the media is getting in on it everybody's trying to get in on it you know india is one of the largest democracies in the world based on the u.s democracy like they have stuff under control. Give them some time to work things out. Yeah. You know, there was um, the other one we did. They talked about, um, you know, having people show their papers. And, and she was, um, you know, they were saying, like, it was only against Muslims. And no, they want everybody who doesn't have paperwork to say, like, okay, if I've lost my, you know, passport, I lost my birth certificate. This I was born here in India. I was born in Kashmir. I, you have to somehow prove it. And it's going through the democracy. We have, yeah. you know, similar to here, people coming across the border. And when you get caught and you need to show that you were born here or not born here and how did you get here, it's the same thing. We have the yeah. same democracy here. You have to, you know, you have to let it work itself out. And people are not dying at the hands of the government, at the hands of the soldiers. They're dying at the hands of terrorists. So you need to let the government work this out the right way. And, you know, we are not experts at this. We're just, you know, watching a few videos and, um, you know, this is kind of what we see. But a lot of this in the U.S. seems to be after the Trump and Modi, um, howdy Modi we did, um, I feel like things have kind of shifted gears and the Democrats are taking a different side, I think, because they think the Republicans are going to get the Indian vote. And so now they're like anti-India is kind of what we the vibe we've been getting from the media. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, last last elections, we voted Democrat. And we'll show you, um, I don't know if my husband has video of our neighborhood, but we were the only people with a blue flag in front of our house that said Clinton on it. And that's who we voted for. And this past few months, we've been doing all this stuff about India and we've been doing more political and learning more about how the parties are voting. And, um, you know, Clinton kind of threw Tulsi Gabbard under the table and she would be somebody, if she ran and ran for the Democratic Party, we would vote for her, not because she's a Hindu, but because how she represents the country and how she thinks she speaks well and she knows her stuff. Yes, but Sunenda did such an awesome job telling yeah. her story. And when people brought up, you know... Stuff against India, definitely defended with the facts. She did an awesome job. We just need more people like her when these congressional hearings happen. More yeah. people out there, you know, not just the Jan family, but we need more people Defending yelling India. at their, you know, Republican and Democratic Party leaders. You know, you have to help us defend India. This is what we need. And yeah, you just, we need more voices out there yeah. spreading the word. So I hope you guys spread the word and I hope you guys like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our wonderful family and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.